Hello my lovelies. Today we are going to talk about husky grooming and actively combating depression without the use of medications. I probably could benefit from medications, but I have seen so many friends and family members go through this medication and that medication that I just don't want to put myself through that until and unless it is unavoidable. So, over the years, and with the aid of a licensed practicing counselor in my 20s, I have developed a few coping strategies. I want to share some of those with you, but we will start with grooming the husky. Before I get into all of that, I would like to say welcome to Cape Bonnie country. Thanks to each and every one of you for stopping by. A little bit of housekeeping as well. I do not see myself being able to create three quality videos each week while also running my home business. So I'm going to shift to two videos per week. I will move the home business talk to either my country life or mental health videos as those seem to be the higher quality discussions. And running a home business falls under both categories. I will post my country life videos on Mondays and move mental health to Fridays. Hopefully, this will allow me more time to conduct research and bring in additional sources. We will not have a Friday video this week. I may sneak in a short here and there as situations arise and warrant them. Now, back to the topic at hand. Huskies shed year-round. Then they have two big blowouts each year, in the spring and in the fall. This is when their fur pulls out in tufts and clumps as they swap between their winter and summer coats. When I adopted Tamir last June, she was a matted mess. The people who had abandoned her had not taken care of the spring blowout. Living in a rural area, there were not many dog groomers within reasonable driving distance. The one closest to me stated that huskies are too reactive for her to groom unless they are sedated. Well, considering that I don't even take ibuprofen until a headache is completely unbearable, well, I'm not going to subject my fur babies to sedation for the sake of someone else's convenience. I had to learn to take care of her coat myself, so I watched a lot of Girl with the Dogs too. And I do recommend following her channel if you want to learn the ins and outs of dog grooming. I will include her link in my description. I bought all the brushes, the combs, and the clippers. I learned that Tamir has to be brushed daily. As you can tell, she hates staying still and being restrained, so I focus on a different area each day. She had her seasonal blowout in October, so a full bath and blowout is not needed today. However, she is a husky living in Alabama. We don't get snow around here. The extra fur on her paws would protect her from snow and ice if she lived in a colder climate. But in Alabama, the excess fur becomes a place for mud and debris to collect. So today is flea drops day, and that's a good time to take care of her feet as well. And her woolly butt and tail need trimming to keep poop from getting stuck. I normally do all of this in my tiny bathroom. However, I decided to give it a try in the living room today. I set everything up on Tamir's rug. She doesn't like using dog beds and prefers to lie on the floor. I was able to brush her in this area. Unfortunately, one of the other dogs knocked the camera over, causing the battery to become dislodged while it was recording. The file was not finalized and could not be read. So I can't show you the brushing part. I righted the camera and started recording with the clipping. With the other dogs roaming around and Doc coming in and out of the house, this proved to be a bad location. So I figured the best spot to set up the camera and moved everything into the bathroom. Tamir does not like having her paws or her rear end messed with. She will nip and do her best to deter me from continuing. So, I do use a soft muzzle to limit her ability to disrupt me. That said, without a full grooming rig, I have to get creative when handling her. She protests and becomes stressed. 
So I have to give her short breaks, move around from one area to another, and give her constant praise and attention in order to minimize her anxiety. While we continue to watch me groom her, I would like to share some of the strategies I use to combat depression. While I choose not to use medications to manage mine, I want to be clear that this is a personal choice as my depression is situational. For many, depression is caused by a neurochemical imbalance that requires medication to control. I am in no way suggesting that people who need medications should stop taking them. If you are on any psychoactive medications prescribed by a psychiatrist, do not attempt to discontinue your medications without consulting your psychiatrist and determining if that course of action is best for you. As a neurodivergent person, I find it hard to form connections with other people. I discussed that in depth in a previous video and that is linked in the description. This inability to connect and interpret social data often leads me to destructive or otherwise negative thoughts. I find myself thinking things like, what's wrong with me? I am not good enough. I am a failure. The world would be better off without me. These thoughts feed on themselves and take me into a very dark place if I don't actively combat them. The first strategy I employ came from my counselor about 25 years or so ago. She used a theory called Rational Emotive Behavioral Therapy. This form of psychotherapy theorizes that our thoughts affect our emotions and our emotions affect our behaviors. If we can change how we think about things, then we can change how we feel and how we act. It sounds simple enough, but it really isn't. In order for it to be effective, I must remain constantly cognizant of my thoughts and feelings, engage in a near constant internal dialogue, and confront negative thoughts as soon as they pop up. For example, I was playing Call of Duty Zombies with Doc Dillinger a few days ago. I am slow and lack hand-eye coordination, but I have improved to the point where we have started trying to work the Easter eggs. We are playing on a map called Nine when Doc needed me to plant my Spear of Ra. I had only leveled it up enough to actually plant it twice before, and I had forgotten how to do it. First, you have to deploy it. Then, you have to plan it. Well, I went straight to planning it. I kept pushing the buttons and it just wasn't working. Luckily, we didn't die in the game over it. I was finally able to get it right, but in the course of it, he called me an idiot. He didn't mean it maliciously. He was teasing in a way that is part of our dynamic, and I tease him in a similar way. It is our dynamic that works for us, so I don't want to hear any negative comments about him acting this or that. This is normal for us. However, for one split second, my brain latched on to that comment. I was an idiot. I am hopeless. And I had to jump on that thought straight off to correct it. I replaced it with, I forgot for a moment, but I fixed it. Wow, that was an idiot thing to forget. And then I laughed at myself. We both started laughing so hard that we had to pause the game for a few minutes. That is a simple example of how the strategy works. It doesn't always work that quickly or well. Sometimes the situation that ignites the negative thoughts is out of my control. External forces push me into a place where I feel lost or confused. And I start a negative internal dialogue because I believe I should know where I am and I should know enough not to be confused. The thoughts become harder to combat. They feed on one another. There are times when I feel like I am drowning and I can't even find the negative thought that started it. I just feel like crying for no reason. 
I usually take myself into my room with one or two of my dogs and let myself cry. My dogs hate to see me cry. So whichever one comes in the room with me will start licking my face and trying to make me better. It's really hard to cry when a pit bull gets anxious and tries to lick up your nostrils or the chewini hops on her hind legs to reach her chin and lick it. So I end up laughing because they are so silly and sweet. That's when I usually realize that no matter how bad and nihilistic I feel, I will never kill myself. I have four lives that depend on me, that want to make me happy, and I could never leave them. The next step when I go into my dark places is to control what I can. I was involved in a car accident in 2020. I was hit by another vehicle. I ended up with two bulging discs in my neck and I can no longer do the kind of work that I did my entire adult life. I have had bouts of depression centered around the fact that I am physically weaker and unable to enjoy some of the things I used to do. I cannot control that. However, I can control how I let that affect my future. I can control how much time I spend in my workshop making leather goods and doing something new. I can control how I treat the injury. I go to a chiropractor to keep my spine aligned. Doing this reduces the stress on the bulging discs. I take CBD and legal hemp derived gummies to help relax the muscles at the end of the day and control pain. The brand and blend that works for me is Mellow Fellows Da Vinci's Clarity Blend. I take a whole one or a half depending on how tense my neck and back are. Being a hemp derivative, it also helps alter my mood. I found new things to replace the things I can no longer do. Sometimes I just have to step away from what is normal and comfortable in order to ignite a little serotonin and battle that depression. I also rely on personal rituals to battle depression. I speak self-affirmations in the mirror every morning. I have seen the face of God. She is within me. I am beloved. I fix my coffee in the morning and stir the sugar and milk in exactly 10 times. That is both an obsessive behavior and a personal ritual that sets my mind to begin thinking about the day ahead. As soon as I finish stirring, my tasks begin. Since I check email, I do my record keeping, and I focus on the day ahead while sipping that coffee. Without that tiny ritual, my day seems a little off. I am more prone to negative and invasive thoughts. While I cannot plan every moment of every day to go exactly the way I want them to, I can balance myself with these and other tiny personal rituals. In the end, I am responsible for my mental health and psychological well-being. Traumas from my past haunt me. My wonky brain causes me to perceive and process things differently than normal. My father yelled too much and was emotionally unavailable. These things explain why and how, but they are not excuses and do not give me license to shirk my responsibility. As a child, I was not responsible for the situations adults placed me in. As an adult, I am responsible for how I allow those experiences to shape my life. I am more than the sum of my experiences, and so the onus is on me to propel myself forward into new experiences. Right now, I am terrified that my home business in this channel will fail, and I will be left destitute. I cannot let that fear rule me. I cannot let that fear paralyze me. I cannot entertain the negative thoughts and fall into a hole of depression. I have to keep moving, keep going, and keep thinking my way out of that hole. If you enjoyed seeing Tamir getting trimmed up and hearing a bit about how I take an active role in battling depression, please like this video by giving it a thumbs up. Subscribe to Kate Bonnie Country 
to see more content from me. Share this video with your friends and families, especially if you think they might find something useful in it. Finally, please comment, how do you cope with negative thoughts and depression? Share your thoughts so maybe we can learn a little bit from each other. Thanks to each and every one of you for stopping by. I will see you next time.